Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some new discoveries in regards to our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and more specifically, the morphology or the shape of the Milky Way. Because once again, something was discovered about the Milky Way, suggesting that our original perception of what Milky Way might look like might have been a little bit incorrect. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, if you were to Google Milky Way, you'll see something that looks like this. This is what our stereotype of the Milky Way is right now. But because we're basically looking at the galaxy from the inside, it's practically impossible for us to visualize this because all we're seeing is this. And so identifying the actual shape of our galaxy has been actually a priority for many decades now, but it's still very, very difficult. But thanks to some of the new advances in telescope technology, and more specifically, a really one single mission, the ESAS or European Space Agency's Gaia telescope has been accurately mapping the distance to various stars for a few years now. More and more studies started to come out, allowing us to calculate distances to various objects extremely precisely, and thus start to create various three-dimensional maps, working out certain structures in the galaxy itself. And because of these advances coming from the Gaia telescope, that's why essentially we were able to discover so many new features of the Milky Way galaxy in the last few years. And this year alone, there have been a lot of different videos, or a lot of different topics that I've covered, essentially helping us realize that the Milky Way is a little bit different from what we imagined. A lot of these videos are going to be popping up somewhere right there at some point. And so anyway, so now we have some more discoveries, and a few more discoveries suggesting something else that we didn't really realize about the Milky Way. And this first discovery comes from the region away from the center of the galaxy. The region that's usually referred to as the galactic anti-center. So basically, if we are here and this is the center, now we're talking about what's on the other side in the dimmer regions on the outskirts of the galaxy itself. The edge of the galaxy, if you want to refer to it that way. And here's sort of what this region looks like. But it's always been somewhat difficult to study this region because, well, we're basically inside the disk of the galaxy and there's a lot of dust here. This entire region of the so-called galactic midplane, where we're also located right now as well, generally has a tremendous amount of dust all over the place that also interferes with a lot of different observations, especially away from the center of the galaxy. But it's not because it's like fog hiding stars, for example. It's actually because the dust in front of the stars ends up interfering with the emissions from the stars and makes it extremely difficult to calculate the exact parameters of those stars. For example, if we want to discover the certain distance to a star, we really have to get the direct light from it. But if there's dust in between us, the calculations in this case become a lot less accurate. And because of this, it's always been difficult to study this region. But a lot of theoretical studies predicted the existence of various types of small filamental structures, to some extent maybe somewhat similar to the ones you see right here, although these are produced by magnetic fields, that could potentially exist in the outer disk of the Milky Way and formed through the interaction with various satellite galaxies that would either collide or possibly even get absorbed by the Milky Way through billions of years of interaction. With some of the more extreme versions of this, usually referred to as the stellar streams. A lot of these have been discovered in the past and a lot of them seem to be connected with ancient dwarf galaxies that either got absorbed or somehow interacted with the Milky Way. But the theoretical calculations also suggest that smaller such structures on the outskirts at the edges of the Milky Way from the interactions with various small galaxies. Yet interestingly, this new analysis revealed something that scientists did not expect. It revealed a tremendous number of these structures, way, way more than they expected, with just some of them visible right here as these lines you see on the screen. And the existence of these very, very large filamentary disk structures that seem to be present all over the midplane of our galaxy, at least in these numbers, is currently very difficult to explain. For example, here there seem to be seven of them, with this, by the way, being the Large Magellanic Cloud and the Small Magellanic Cloud, this right here is the bridge connecting them. And this large formation represents Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy that we've discussed in some of the previous videos that's currently being broken apart by our own galaxy. Either way though, just the number of these formations is kind of difficult to explain, but it probably does have something to do with some of the other galaxies being broken apart by the Milky Way as well. With one explanation suggesting that maybe these are just tidal arms from various interaction between the Milky Way's disk 
and various satellite galaxies that somehow disturbed it one way or another. Since there are so many different satellite galaxies the Milky Way has, close to about 50, it's sort of expected that a lot of them will create some kind of a deformation in the disk. But as we've discussed in one of the previous videos, a lot of these galaxies have never actually been in this vicinity, so many of them have never interacted with the Milky Way. Which means that maybe this was created by some of the other galaxies that used to exist and were eventually absorbed by the Milky Way itself. And some of the previous investigations of similar streams that were detected a few years ago suggested that many of these stars are extremely old. They're basically over 8 billion years old. This means, of course, that a lot of this interaction probably happened a long, long time ago. Or maybe all of this is somehow related to the discovery from a few years ago that suggested that our galaxy is somewhat warped and has these unusual formations at the outskirts, which could then create these very large distortions at the edge of the galaxy, which we're now observing as these unusual formations or these unusual filaments. In other words, it's currently anyone's guess. What is clear, however, at least from these studies, is that the edge of our galaxy is far from being quiet. It seems to indicate a lot of exciting activity, a lot of different types of impacts, a lot of different kicking around, and a lot of different types of mixing of materials, which potentially created all sorts of different filaments. And so if I were to use my very poor Photoshop skills to try to illustrate this using this Milky Way image, instead of being very orderly and very even as you see it here, it's probably full of different disturbances, all sorts of unusual filaments, all sorts of unusual spiky formations. With all of this being a sign of billions of years of interaction between various satellite galaxies and the Milky Way. Okay, that's probably not what it looks like, but I tried my best. But that's just one of these discoveries about the edge of the galaxy. There was another discovery also around the same time, and also from the same data, but this time about one of the galactic arms of the Milky Way that's actually one of the most well-studied arms to begin with. The Perseus arm you see right here, with the Sun itself being located in this region. And once again, if we actually look at our current understanding of the Milky Way galaxy, the way we think it looks, it might possess these very orderly, very nicely shaped arms, with basically this being the stereotypical image from a typical textbook. But because we didn't really have Gaia telescope data up until recently, nobody really knew how well structured and how orderly all of this appeared from a distance or basically if you were to look at our galaxy, from the top. And interestingly, for this study, the scientists decided to rely on a combination of Gaia telescope data and all of that dust that I previously mentioned. The observations from the dust actually helped the scientists discover what all of this looks like. And in this case, by creating a 3D map of dust located in a certain part of the galaxy, we can generally use this to examine large collection of stars and where these stars are located. And so by using three-dimensional gas maps created by another team and combining this with new observations of various molecular clouds that are usually connected to these dust clouds, the scientists were able to work out the actual shape of Perseus galactic arm, which then allowed them to create a three-dimensional reconstruction of what the entire arm might sort of look like. And although all of the previous work suggested the arm was very well defined and had a very specific structure, this study presented a completely different image. All of the gas that was previously believed to be located in the same region was actually much, much farther away from one another, suggesting, of course, that the arm might actually be just an illusion, or it at least does not have a very distinct and very narrow shape. The authors refer to this as a clumpy, chaotic formation. And in this case, a lot of this material seems to stretch at a distance of about 10,000 light years even though it was believed to be in a relatively similar region of space. Which the scientists behind this paper suggest that, well, maybe at least this region of the galaxy, although possibly even other regions, seem to resemble another galaxy we're very familiar with. The galaxy known as M83 or Massey 83, that possesses arms that do have a lot of breaks, a lot of irregular shapes in them, and overall seems to be extremely mysterious as well, because a lot of these formations also present a lot of different types of activity. A big number of supernova, a big number of different star formation regions, but it also seems to contain a double nucleus in the center, which to some extent might explain why these arms are not as defined. Although at the moment, because this is just a completely brand new discovery, nobody really has any idea what's going on, 
and why Perseus arm seems to be so disorganized and so chaotic. And so for all we know, maybe some of the arms are disorganized, but other ones might be more structured. And so if I get back to my Photoshop skills here, we now also have to sort of destroy or disassemble the Perseus arm with my new Milky Way version resembling something like this. Definitely more of a Picasso here than um, Rembrandt. Anyway, I'm just bad at art. So what all of these studies suggest to us is that, well, we still are basically learning about the morphology of the Milky Way, and the last five years and a lot of different studies using Gaia telescope have been absolutely instrumental in discovering the true image of our galaxy. It does not seem to be this simple shape. It doesn't seem to be so organized and so well defined. It clearly contains a lot of filaments and a lot of disorganization on the inside, and also some of its arms might not be well defined. And so in a nutshell, what all of this means is that you should probably subscribe, because we're going to be discussing more of these discoveries in some of the future videos. Until then, check out the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye. And then maybe there's something like this, and there's something like this, and this can be just a big smiley face.